Now, what's going on in our context is this. Our world majors on the idea that freedom is being allowed to do and to be whatever you want to be. And anything that limits your freedom to be what you want to be, that is, inverted commas, wrong. And the advertisers pick up on this, don't they? They play into that. They play right into it. PlayStation. Be whoever you want to be. They're playing right into the spirit of the age. Because it sells PlayStations. Burger King. Sells burgers. <laughs> Mainly. Have it any way you want it. Invent yourself. Nike. Just do it. What you fancy? Just do it. And they tap into this prevailing ethos, not just an ethos, but the ethic of our age. It is right to invent yourself and do and to be what you want to be. And if you start to say anything that seems to contradict that to anyone, whether it's um, gay marriage, whether it's uh, anything, anything you like, abortion, any of those issues, what happens is they, they make a response. And this response is called Mego. M-E-G-O. You, you, you tackle that fundamental religious premise that I have the right to be what I want to be and that it is right for me to be what I want to be, what I invent myself as, the, the sort of Lego idea of personal identity where I take a brick from here, I take a brick from there and I put them together the way I want to make me the person I want to be, inventing my identity. If you challenge that at any point, you get this Mego response, my eyes glaze over. Right? That's the response you get. So immediately people switch off because it's a voice they don't want to hear. It's one of the many voices, but it's, it's contrary to their ethic, which is I invent myself to be the person I want to be. My eyes glaze over. Uh, now that's a problem. They may still be standing there, but they're gone. <laughs> their eyes have glazed over and they're gone. They're not listening. It's a problem because against that sort of pluralistic background in the multicultural Roman Empire, the New Testament teaches that true freedom is not in inventing yourself and being who you want to be, but in discovering who we are in self-submission to the God who actually knows us, actually loves us, and died to save us. There's the problem. Now, it's not as if prioritising hearing the voice of God is particularly easy for us either, for two reasons. Vaughan Roberts was speaking at this, on, on this text at the, uh, at the conference I was at last week, the Proclamation Trust Conference up in London, in the Barbican in London, and uh, I owe a lot of my thinking on this to him and to others at that conference, uh, and it's the fruit of having had their input and having chewed it uh, during the course of the last few days, as you can imagine, um, big ideas. Just, throbbing through the head and, and linking up with other thoughts and you know how that goes when you're trying to think something through. He's spoken honestly as Vaughan Roberts, extremely helpfully about his own struggles as an Anglican vicar in Oxford, his own struggles with same-sex attraction as a faithful follower of Jesus and he's been very, very constructive about that um, from, a, from a biblical point of view. But he puts it like this, we have a problem hearing the voice of God and prioritising that because sometimes for ourselves it will feel like, as we listen to the voice of God, it will feel like plucking out our own eyes or cutting off our own hands. Just because our own inner conflicts with temptation make it feel like that. But then of course in addition to that we'll be vilified for that because in our in our world, let's put it like that, questioning the right of self-determination and self-invention, who I'm going to be, questioning that is the ultimate modern secular heresy. In people's eyes as we speak to them about the scriptures and biblical ways of life, we make ourselves in their eyes complete heretics and they, me go, you know, the eyes go, my eyes glaze over. And we're being therefore vilified as immoral for holding biblical truth. And we're being vilified for that in the public sphere. And the voice within us then naturally starts to ask, wouldn't it be better to tone things down a bit? Which voice are you going to listen to? 
The pressure's on as being a Bible-believing Christian means it can be a hard job to get a job at all or to get promotion in your workplace on account of your extremist, brackets biblical, views. And we haven't started talking about the extremism legislation that's being considered in Parliament in our country. So that's our context.